Um, that was quite a while ago. I started at uh, the Fab Lab Protospace in Utrecht here in the Netherlands. I'm a mechanical engineer. And uh, I stumbled onto a project by Adrian Boyer from Bath University, the Rap Rap project, which is basically the, the start of uh, a whole maker scene in 3D printing. Um, he opened his uh, complete project, uh, which was the, the, the Rap Rap, uh, the Replicating mm -hmm. Rapid Prototyper. Yeah. I, I really wanted to make one. Uh, although I realized I couldn't do it. I found it on the internet, uh, I wanted to do it, but I couldn't uh, uh, do it all alone. So what I tried to do is, I had the facilities around me in the fab lab, and I organized a group of people that were also enthusiastic. I spoke a lot of people and I just asked them, do you also want to build one? Okay. So we started a kind of a workshop uh, with about 10 people and together we started building. So everybody brought a little bit of additional knowledge to the basic knowledge that we found on the internet. And that got things really going. And um, the, the, the guys that I involved uh, uh, also included the, my co-founders of the company. So we had some little experience in what we were going to encounter. So we brought them together uh, with a lot of additional people and we really said, yes, this is what we are going to do. And the Fab Lab was just the exact right spot to start such a project because all the facilities were there. We could make these machines and what was not right, we could change instantly because we had a laser cutter, we had a 3D printer, we had a milling machine, uh, we had some electronic equipment. Uh, we could just do it all. That's what sparked it really off. Exactly. Um, but that is what the internet is all about as well. All the people on the internet, they don't know each other. They have a common interest and everybody is putting in a little bit of knowledge. So uh, it really worked in, in combining all these uh, 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 people and put them in the same space and then bring that ba knowledge back also to the project by, uh, by Adrian Boyer. And uh, so other people uh, had the advantage of that as well. So it was like an, uh, an oil stain. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger and, uh, and we were in the middle of it. Uh, that was really great. The only trick was that it took us quite a while to build one machine and uh, the results of that machine were not really that good. So with a few guys we uh, redesigned the machine and that became the first uh, Ultimaker. Um, what we did was we also published the files and made them open source again because that's where we came from. Uh, so we opened the files, uh, put them on the internet and a lot of people came to us and they said that is really great. Um, where can we buy it? So basically it was a kind of uh, overwhelming question of a demand from the market that, that really kicked us off. Uh, so, so we founded the company uh, and uh, we did that very rapidly because we just needed a bank account because people wanted to spend their money on, on, on our machine. I was the lab manager at Protospace. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of us, uh, Eric de Bruyne, he was uh, still studying uh, and his thesis was about the, the open source wrapper project, so that really integrated really well. And uh, Martijn Elseman, uh, he is a, a graphical designer and he's really uh, fond of design and he tried to make, to make things really better by just making stuff with your hands again. So it was a really great combination in which we uh, uh, really kicked it off, yes. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the, the open source uh, model, uh, I, I truly believe in it and uh, that makes the big difference. Uh, I think what we are trying to do is uh, uh, to see whether we can make a viable model in the real world of uh, open source hardware and uh, I think we already have demonstrated it, that it is really feasible. Um, what I think is the beauty of it is that we have so much connections with so many people um, the people on my uh, payroll uh, are not the company. We free founders, we are not the company. It's all our users, all out our en enthu uh, enthusiasts, um, all the people involved, all our customers, we all together form our company. And I think that is truly amazing. So it's a different model and that only works if you are open and if you are willing to to uh, uh, let people in. And it is sometimes difficult, but it's ex expectation management. Um, sometimes people uh, uh, hear of ideas and they think we can incorporate it in our products tomorrow. 
However, <laughs> that's not yet the case. I would love to, but that's very difficult. And um, I think uh, we are uh, uh, in our company working really hard on finding ways to be able to do that. You want to know how big the advantage is? It's enormous. Why? Uh, I don't have to bother about IP. It's just out there. I am being cloned anyway. So I made a great product. It's worthy cloning. Um, by opening up, I get ideas from the outside. My R&D, I have a, a limited amount of people inside my company that have, are, are having ideas, great ideas. But there are people outside this company that are having even more ideas. I have so much added value from the outside world by sharing, uh, so the development of our, of our product is, is going much faster. Without our community, the Ultimaker wouldn't have been at a, a quality level that it is right now. So it is like um, not being brave, but I truly believe in it, that it is really giving us the pace that we need. So the 20 years that a patent is giving you to commercialize it and then it opens up, that's way too long. I mean, the 20 years period uh, uh, originates from more than 100 years ago. Well, come on guys. <laughs> the world has changed. In 20 years, 3D printing will be totally different. It will not be the same. Uh, next year we have outclassed ourselves. I think by opening up and letting the competitors also uh, use what we do, uh, re really kicks us to be faster and I think that is helping us to be on the, on, the, on the cutting edge, on the front row and making things happen. Yes, um, I, uh, I have to disappoint those people. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Um, uh, the Ultimaker, as we started it, uh, started as a do-it-yourself project. So by first a box with only the parts, you tinker it together yourself. Uh, screwdriver included, everything. And we all started playing. Um, we have developed now uh, to uh, uh, a new model, uh, a range of models that we just la uh, launched last week at uh, the CES. Um, and these are models that come out of the box. Uh, and that is a different ballpark. Um, uh, I know we made a promise, uh, however we tried it ourselves and I have a machine with dual head in my own house, uh, I don't use it, why not? It doesn't work like the way we sh uh, think it should work. For example, uh, if I only print with one nozzle, the other nozzle might well uh, tip over my whole print or it is scratching it or it is damaging it. Um, uh, the way to make a print of a, a, a part that consists of two materials or with support material is a, is a different ballpark. Um, a water-soluble material is what we really like to have uh, to be able to print with. It's not there yet, not as an uh, uh, idiot-proof solution as we'd like to have it so people can really work with the machine. What we have done is we set a, a quality standard uh, with the Ultimaker 2, which is really high. Um, I don't want to compromise the, the quality that we can print with the Ultimaker 2 by introducing additional uh, possibilities with it that make the end results worse. So I, I know I'm disappointing people but I'd rather do it this way than that they have a disappointing experience when they put two nozzles in their machine.